Welcome to another unboxing. Today we finally take a look on the latest Samsung Galaxy and tech station. So Galaxy S8 Plus and the deck station. And they also were so kind to send a display. First I wanted to say I don't really need a display, but then I thought I can also take a look on this curved Samsung display. I never had one here in the office, so let's see how this is. So it's fixed angle or apparently huh? contact, warranty, warranty. Oh, with the surface people told me to read the manual. Here is not even, where is the page essential left blank? Warranty card, here yeah, only warranty cards. Mm -hmm. It's funny enough that people tell me to read the manual for the surface keyboard. And when I want to read the manual there is not even a manual. So let's see, I actually never had a Samsung phone. Oh, so Samsung Galaxy, adaptive fast charging, and two USB adapters actually, so this must be an OTG adapter, this is on the go, for host mode, I would assume, and this is some micro USB adapter, probably also to comply with the European Universal Charger, oh. so this is all the stuff that you get with the phone, obviously a fingerprint magnet, and this is a DeX station, which comes with display adapter, Ethernet, and such. I must say it feels better in the hand than I imagined. I imagined it's more slippery. This is thin edge, but actually it doesn't feel bad. A little bit funny, you have to agree to four terms and conditions. End user license agreement, privacy policy, diagnostic data and marketing information. Very funny. Or do we even have to agree to all? We only agree to this. I agree to the terms license and privacy. Okay, so you can skip the last two. Checks for software updates immediately. Interesting. By continuing, you agree to the terms of service and have read the privacy policy. Yeah, of course, we have read the privacy policy. Very funny. By continuing, you agree that the device may also automatically download and install updates. So all those many agreements, setup face recognition, fingerprint reader, iris scanner. Very funny. If you're wearing glasses or contacts, it's harder for the iris scanner to identify you. You can take them off for better results. So if I each time want to take off my glasses or taking out contacts is obviously a total no-go for this iris scanner. Of course, integration-wise, first you have your Google account set up and now you have also Samsung account set up. That's of course, um, they really want date of birth for this. This is of course really a little bit much. Let's see how many do we need to agree from this. I have to say it feels much better in the hand holding it than I would have thought from the size, pictures and website and such. Comparing this to the aging Nexus 5, it's about the same width. And um, just some few millimeters wider, obviously much taller, and about the same width. It's a little bit optical illusion with the thin edges, but in the center it's quite the same. Yeah, obviously, so this is metal and glass, and this is plastic. And by the way, unlike Apple's latest offerings, this still comes with an awesome headphone jack, so you can directly connect all your audio feel high end equipment without any adapters and dongles that you may forget and lose. Anyway, we are mostly here for the deck stock anyway. Interesting that someone already tried to peel this label off here. So this is a deck station that I was mostly interested about. Aside from being a stand and charging port for the phone, obviously, it also allows you to connect the display with HDMI and surprisingly enough also comes with an Ethernet port. Let's connect the display as well. It says welcome to Samsung DeX. It's a DeX standing for some desktop experience. Your phone connected to your display. Is this correct English? Phones? Phone is... Well, I'm not native English, but to me this does not look like the most properly formed English sentence. Anyway, now you're ready for the full desktop experience. Any apps you have open may close when you start or exit Samsung DeX. Save your data before starting or exiting Samsung DeX. Make sure all your four corners correctly to adjust brightness, sharpness and size when you use the display settings. So on, on the first glance this actually looks quite neat. Of course all this cable thing you can... Okay, welcome to the Samsung account, very funny. Astonishing how much stuff it's already downloading. So of course all the cable business, this is a headphone, uh, this are the adapters. Of course you can store these cables there in the back so that it looks neat and clean and you can obviously use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. The only thing I don't like so much is the angle of the display. First of all it's obviously not height adjustable. Some of the angle is also not the most perfect so... Samsung internet? 
Do we not have Chrome here? So we have Chrome and Samsung Internet. Oh, sign into Chrome. Is this really necessary? Okay, got it, fine, whatever. How is the full screen experience? Where is the search? What is that even? Weather? Why is this on weather? Just don't want to break it there, not that I have to return a broken off plastic piece. Oh no, ah, it's, it is actually adjustable, just need to press a little bit more. Okay, so then it's already more awesome, you just need to press a little bit more. Okay, this is not so bad, so it's maybe not height adjustable. Well, then you put a book there, I guess. Okay, so this is actually quite neat. This, uh, I guess I need here more studio lightning. Where are the controls on this? Let's see or something. A little bit interesting to have this jock dial thing here on the back. Of course it keeps the front clean. Once you know where it is, it's not a problem. So this is uh, running at uh, 1080p right now, 60 hertz. We'll be really curious to see if the deck supports higher display resolutions. Maybe I try to connect also my 4K Dell display later. And it also has freezing, by the way. Some of this needs a little bit getting used to. English for you viewers and the brightness maybe standard. It's probably already less bright for the camera. So this Galaxy S8 Plus sent to me for testing has 4 gigs of RAM, um, 64 gigabyte of storage. This of course should be plenty enough to do a lot of work as you also find spreadsheets and Word applications in the Google App Store. And uh, I can imagine you could get quite some work done here and also to connect to remote displays and uh, secure shell remote logins and uh, as Samsung also announces Linux on Galaxy enables developers to use Samsung smartphones for all their computing needs, even app development. And this is by the way, as you probably already have seen in my previous videos, I'm not the greatest fan of Apple's latest products anymore. And this is of course really the difference. I'm really tired of having five devices, a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, another Mac. Um, when in fact these devices are now so powerful to connect the display, to connect other peripheral devices and get all your work done. Why should I have a Mac when the Galaxy Samsung or even iPhone 8 or 10 or iPad has similar computing power than a MacBook Air? Then I don't need a MacBook Air and I rather carry just this around with me. This will be interesting. I personally have the feeling this may be KVM based. They continue to write here Linux and Galaxy allows the latest Samsung Galaxy smartphone users their preferred Linux distribution on their smartphone utilizing the same Linux kernel that powers the Android OS and ensures the best possible performance. So with this wording, as they want people to still run the same Android, I have the feeling this may be KVM based, KVM being this kernel and QAMO based virtual machines. I think either it will be KVM based or if they are crazy Xen, but I probably guess more KVM or a simple change root kind of sandboxing. But um, if they really want to support full distributions then it probably should be more than some change root thing and it's maybe KVM. In my previous videos you have already seen I use this external SSD in a little bit similar way only that I only carry the SSD and plug it into my PC or Mac that I may have somewhere at home in the office or even in trade shows or or things like this. Why this solution is also very flexible the downside is you need to have some device at your target destination and um, if you don't have something standing there or it's incompatible, you're out of luck. With this, of course, you carry your computing unit with you and you do not need to rely on having some device, some PC standing wherever you go. I also heard that you may not always need the stack station and that you may be able to connect and display directly to the USB-C port and still can use wireless, Bluetooth, keyboard and mouse. But of course, the stack stock gives you not only is there some integrated cooling that cools the phone if you really do heavy duty processing work, it also comes with more USB ports, charging and even a wired Ethernet port. So for your main desk at work or home, the stack station may be a suitable solution. If you just want to connect a display quickly in a hotel or trade or something, just a USB-C port may be enough. I will test this more in depth the next days. I'm not sure if they in time will release this Linux on Galaxy. I have the feeling this takes some more days. I already registered there some week ago. So I will continue using and testing this and see how this goes. Uh, as I was not a primary Android user the last years, I probably have to download and uh, maybe even purchase some more full-blown apps in the Google Play App Store for this. On first glance this looks super promising and is totally something I would like to have for my future computing needs because I'm really getting too tired to carry too much stuff with me around. I hope you found this first unboxing and overview useful and interesting and don't forget to subscribe for even more detailed videos to come on this and other topics.